Now, um, let's start off with, I guess you guys can already tell what the prefabs do, so I'm going to skip that and go into actually how to create it yourself. Right here we have the draw tool, and um, I might just zoom this in for you. So, let's zoom in on the creator for you guys. Uh, I want specific. Alright. So right here, we have the draw tool. Now, you may, clicking this, you only get the draw tool. And you're thinking, well, how do I specifically get shape or anything I want to do? Because obviously, all I'm getting is a circle right now. Well, that's what this subcategory of lines of objects is, is the more specific area of the drawings. So you can draw by clicking, there you go, uh, a square, rectangle, which is a customizable rectangle at that. So that's an option. Square is, well, square. You already saw the circle. Uh, triangles are a bit weirder how they work. Apparently it's like the pointing the opposite way you drag but you can make these customizable as well yeah and it also like reverses like once you go up higher and stuff so yeah we have a pentagon and this is even weirder yet but just hold hold your mouse and start rotating it to get the right direction I mean shouldn't see the cool um uh, God, I we we have a six-sided shape. I don't actually. That's yeah, that's six-sided. I I don't remember what that's called. Is it like a hexagon? No, wait. I don't know. I, I just know five pentagon. Maybe. Don't get mad at me if I'm wrong. But yeah, you have that shape. Now this one is one I use often for hit boxes. Um, if you don't know what that is, uh, I'm not gonna explain it to you all right now. Ah, no, stop drawing. Stop drawing. Anyways, um, ignore what I'm doing at the moment. I just accidentally do an extra run. But, yeah, this is where you can just draw a shape however you want. Right now I'm clicking the specific, like, I'll, I'll, I'll explain it in a bit. Just give me a second. But, yeah, with these, after drawing it, you can um, draw your shape however you want. And it's kind of like how the shooter map creator works, is where you can double click a one to remove it and double click somewhere on the line to make a new joint. However, note that if you put too many uh, different areas or in a certain pattern, it may become a glitched object, which is no good for creating games, as you kind of figure. But yeah, like I said, this is kind of like how the map creator or shooter creator works. And yeah, as you see, it glitched because I did all this funkiness. So don't try to get all fancy like shooter maps. You can get rid of that now. Alright, so I'm just gonna keep using a circle. Alright, so here we have the graphics effects and and or um some of them just keep an object pinned to the background. So normally you're just set off with this, which makes an op as it says, object moves and rotates naturally with no constraints. In other words, if you have a graphic on this, it will move with the object, which can work if you want it that way. But if you want just like a solid, like let's say side scroller, you if your guy tips over, the graphic tips over and it looks kind of awkward. So you can be like running upside down. Yeah, that, that just creates shenanigans. The next one we have is as it says, object rotates but does not move, like it's pinned to the background. Now, this is, I don't use this too often, because if I make a rotating object, I just use a pin joint, but, I don't know, I, I guess you could use this, but what it does is it pins it to the background, and you can move the center point of it, and add like a motor or something, and then it'll go off a different pattern, and yeah, it's just weird. I, I, I don't even know how to explain that one too well. Alright, but this one, as it says, object moves but does not rotate as it's sliding. Now this one I use quite a bit. Basically it keeps your object, well, straight 
as it is. It will not rotate, but it can still move and jump and do whatever you want to make it do. Note that it is not solidly placed. So this is really good to make creators, like, just not creators, players. There you go. It's good to make players for your game. Like, you know, have put some a jumper control on it and whatnot. And the next one we have right here is, as it says, object does not move or rotate ever. That's basically platforms. So, yep, that's how those work. Next we have the material. Um, these are just, <coughs> give me a second. <coughs> Ow. <coughs> Anyways, these are, oh, sorry about that. Uh, set it off. Explode. Okay, so, um, these are the materials you can make your objects out of, which, um, we got wood, metal, or, it's a steel-like material, but I call it metal. It's, um, ice-like, which I call ice. Uh, this stuff's weird. It's rubber-like material, but that, that one's weird. Glass, it says glass-like, but, of course, we're gonna call it glass. Uh, this is tire-like material. Uh, then we got cloud, but it's this magic material with very low friction and no gravity effect. Uh, I call this balloon. This calls magic material. Um, I call this the magnet, but it's this permanent magnet material. See, I love how it just like says, oh, all these objects are like what it is, but it isn't it. Nope, it's just some material like it from an alien planet. Um, then we got super bouncy material. I just call this like, you know, bouncers, because it reminds me off of the platform or like the pink bouncing things. Alright, so wood, um, it's the default setting, and it's average friction bounce, like the average friction and um, bounce on it. So, you know, it won't bounce very well, but it has some bounce to it, and the friction it gives off it, it's like not much, but it is like relevant. But I don't use that like too often for characters. Or uh, players and whatnot, but I do use it for platforms occasionally. But that's just me. Or I sometimes use it for shots, weak ones at that. I'll get into shots later that deals with spawners and adders. And yeah. Now metal. Um, this is a good one to make for uh, shots as well, because it makes bullets like solid and destroy things a lot better if you're putting easy crush layers. And uh, spawners or adders. Um, yeah, it has a uh, average friction. I can see that bounce, and it has like you know average bounce and friction, just like the wood. But the thing special about it is it's very high density. So that means if you have crush layers, it's very hard to break, or it breaks things easily. So that's a plus. Ice is a weird one, but it helps if you're like making, I don't know, like slick platforms hard to kind of run around on. Now it says that it has very low friction, which, as I said, would make it easy for like making hard to run on objects, so that's fairly reasonable. Um, now let's see, it has low bounce, I guess I can see that, and, and density, so low bounce and density, which means it can break easy. Which I can see because ice is pretty, you know, weak. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to the rubber-like material. It has high friction, so you know when you try, if you take a better like you take rubber, like you know, or just rubber band or something, try rubbing it off something, it just uses to move easily. So yeah, uh, high friction. Well, I just have that uh, high bounce and high density. So this is just like the high all-around object. Uh, but not as high as um, the steel, because that's a very high, because that makes a big difference, you know. <laughs> All right, so next we have glass. This is what I usually use for side-scrolling characters, mainly because it has um, a low friction, and it has average density and low bounce. So basically this helps to make just, like, a barely pushable enemy, like, like, from enemies, it's hard to get knocked around, like, everywhere. 
the low friction makes it so it doesn't get stuck on platforms you're making, and then the average density doesn't have all the annoying sound effects that change with densities. You, you'll, I've noticed that, but I don't know if it annoys other people. Alright, next we've got the tire like material, which has very high friction, so like the steel that has very high density, this is a very high friction object of everything. So that can help if you're like trying to make some, like, I don't know, maybe a spider web ground, I don't know, do whatever you want. High bounce, oh, and guys, if you don't know what friction is, I guess I'll be the science guy to tell you, friction is a force that goes against two objects sliding against each other. So let's say you have the character on a ground platform. Depending on the friction, it'll slow down the character's movement more with the higher friction. So keep that in mind. Anyways, back onto the tire like object. It has high bounce, which you think a tire would, and low density, which I don't know about that one, but I'll go with it. So yeah. Then we have what I call a cloud. Now I'm gonna ignore what it says because I know what it does. If you have gravity yeah, on, on the play field, which is set by default, this thing will float in the air. It doesn't give a crap. It's just like, I uh, screw gravity, okay? Well, this one doesn't screw gravity as much as the next one, but anyway. And then also what I've noticed is if you have motion resistance and no gravity, it seems to glitch things up a bit if you make it a major object. But um, I don't think it's affected by uh, motion resistance. All right, next we have the one, if you get the ASDF reference, if you have gravity, this one screws gravity because it floats up. It's just like, nope. All right, but, um, yeah, so it has, like, negative um, gravity effect, and it has a low friction, according to this, very low friction. This has very low friction as well, the cloud. So those two are basically the same, just have different gravity effects. Next, we have the magnet, and the magnet is a control you can add later, but this one's a permanent magnet with average friction, high density. So it's like a steel object a bit, but not exactly. Um, but other steel objects stick to it, so yeah. Now, this one's just kind of a. <coughs> sorry, I've got. I don't know what's wrong with me there. Um, and my voice sounds weird. Wow, okay. Anyways, now for the distractions. Um, yeah, come on, show me. There we go. Uh, super bouncy material that launches objects away when touched, and that can be interesting. I've used it a bit in some of my boss fights, like projectiles to try to push the enemy away. Or not that the enemy would be you, but yeah, that that one's an interesting one. You can use it in very creative ways. All right, next we got the crush layers. Now, right here, this is solid object, so that's the default if you don't even want to use crush layers to begin with. But next, you have three settings. This one making objects really easy to crush. Uh, this one making it uh, average to be crushed. And this one being like hard to crush. So, if you're wondering, well, Chad, what's crush? Well, it basically means if an object hits you hard enough or you hit an object hard enough, or whatever you're using that has a crush layer, it'll break. It'll just go poop, crack, and break. It's just gone. So yeah, that, that's an interesting one. Um, yeah, that's it for the drawing tool tutorial. Uh, I will talk to you guys later when we move on to the next few um, sections here, because PPG is going to be quite an expansive um, tutorial. So yeah, uh, I'll let's see. I'm gonna draw a new object. Yeah, I'll call it the drawing tool tutorial. Well, um. Stay tuned for other tutorials on every single thing in the physics creator that I know. <laughs> I know I might miss a thing or two. Um, yeah, so this is Shadras of uh, Stay Squash with my friends, and I will see you later.